Hey, and welcome to Magnolia 5.6.3 release highlights. In this video, we only cover a few key improvements, but please check the release notes for the full scoop. So for the author, we have the instance label, which is going to help you navigate multiple environments. And for developers, we have uh, the definitions can be deprecated, problem reporting for missing items now, there's new filter operators for the REST delivery endpoint, and we now have uh, core support out of the box. So let's take a look at these. Most of you have many instances of Magnolia running. For example, it's common to have a shared development environment, a UAT environment for testing, and a live production environment. With the new sticker, it's easy to tell these instances apart and keep them straight. So here we have uh, live configured. We see we're on the author. And I might have some other Magnolias running, for example, a uh, development environment. So how's that configured? That's a Magnolia property file. And I just have these new properties where I can uh, configure the name I want and the color of the sticker. And if I really want, I can um, also change the web app name. So let's talk about this uh, definition deprecation. So the most noticeable benefit is simply that developers are going to get a lot of helpful information in the problems tab of the definitions app. Let's take a look at that. And we see a report of a deprecated definition. The bigger story underneath is that just like classes and methods can be deprecated in Java, you can now deprecate any YAML definition in Magnolia. This will let Magnolia give developers a heads up about coming changes and allows us to introduce improvements without waiting for a major version. Of course, you can use the mechanism in your shared modules as well. Just for example, um, if we need to rename a definition, we can simply create a new one with a new name and mark the old one as deprecated. So everything will continue to work, but developers will see a problem in the definitions app. If we look at the error, it says that a deprecated dialog definition, dep comp, is used. And it's been deprecated since 5.6.2. And it even has a hint to use the shiny new comp dialog. So how did the system know to show this message? So if we look at our dialogs, we do indeed have a dep comp dialog. And check it out, it has this uh, deprecated metadata. So this is a new thing that we've introduced. And you can give it a since, and you can give it a description. Please use the new shiny new comp dialog. Now just because this is deprecated, it's not going to show up in the problems view. Only because it's actually being used does it show up in the problems view. So let's take a look, let's fix that. So we actually already have a shiny new comp uh, dialog, and we just need to use that one. So I go to my template definition. Here's the where it's using the dialog, and let's have it use the undeprecated one. Save that. Go over to Magnolia, get it to refresh the view, and my deprecation problem is gone. Now I want to point out that um, what you've seen here, this is called a Magnolia deprecation, uh, and it, that makes it show up in the definitions app. And you can also do that for classes. So also, if a definition is using a deprecated class, you're going to get that same message. And uh, that is pretty simple. Uh, it's just a annotation, mgnl deprecated, and you can give it a since. And you can also deprecate methods. And here's an example of uh, adding the mgnl deprecated with a since and also a description. Now let's take a look at the problem reporting for missing items. While we were working on the deprecations topic, we saw another good opportunity to give developers helpful information. So the problems tab now also reports when a definition references another definition or resource that doesn't actually exist in the system. So let's take a look at that. Uh, I've prepared another light module. And I'll just install that. So it's the 563 demo. I'll just put that in my project. And this is bringing in um, a template that's missing some things. So let's see how Magnolia responded. Again, I'll just refresh the problems view. Okay, I'm getting a lot of problems. 
So with this uh, component, there's a renderer definition problem. The renderer fee marker is not registered. So we're going to need to fix that. The dialog missing things wrong is not registered. And it even detects missing file resources. So there's a script missing. It says that this script is not available. And then um, there's also a template availability problem because a page is referencing a component that doesn't exist. There is no there there component. So let's just fix these errors quickly and see if that all goes away. So how about we use free marker and use the right script, the right dialog, and then uh, let's look at that page definition. Okay, it's using a component that just doesn't exist so let's stop using it and again go back to Magnolia and problem's gone but free marker is not registered probably it's free marker yep okay problem solved next up the new filter operators for the rest delivery endpoint it's now easier than ever to get the exact content you want via rest so it's always been possible to filter on specific properties, but now you have many operators to choose from. So equals we already have had before. Now we have not equals, less than, greater than, and like, and in, and not in. So this is really great. You can filter on multiple properties, and here's how you use it. You, you put in the property that you're filtering on, and then you add the operator. So let's just take a look at a few examples. I already have a, a REST endpoint set up. And uh, one example would be the like. So here I'm, I'm searching on location. I'm searching the tours endpoint. Location is like, and then um, percent USA percent, and I need to do the encoding here. And so I now instead of getting all the tours, I'm just getting the tours where the location includes USA. And because it's like, it gets me Miami um, or Honolulu, anything that has USA in it. And then, uh, yeah, uh, another cool one is the in operator. So now I can search for tours that were last modified within a range. And here um, I have in, and then the first value, and then the tilde, and then the final value. And it's going to give me um, all the tours that are modified in that range. And the last topic is core support, cross-origin resource sharing. It's now easy to allow access to content on a Magnolia server to web pages running on other servers by enabling cores. This is important in headless scenarios where a front-end JavaScript application served from a different web domain should grab content via REST from Magnolia. This is sometimes necessary in production, but it is almost always the case during development. If I'm developing a front-end app on localhost, I can't access Magnolia via REST without this. So I actually have a little uh, front-end app running on localhost, and it's trying to get content from Magnolia and um, it doesn't really show up very nicely here. And if I look at the console, here's the problem. So it was trying to make a REST call to the Magnolia server, which is running on a different, well, it's a different port, but it could be a different domain as well. And it says the problem that there's no access control allow origin header. That's basically the, what signifies the core support. So it's not going to let me access the REST endpoints. So now that's really easy to fix. So let's go back to Magnolia. Basically, we have a new filter. So in the filter chain, um, I'm using that new filter. Now you still have to configure it, but the, the feature is available out of the box. And um, the new filter is the add headers filter, because that's what you need to enable cores. And we have it set up here specifically for cores in this example. So here's the uh, headers that it was, it was expecting. We provide them. We use a bypass in this example to, to only um, apply the headers when uh, they're hitting a rest endpoint. And 
it's in disabled now, which is why it wasn't working. So let's enable it and see how our app runs now. Yes. Now we get all the rest content and we can display it in a headless fashion in our front end app. So those are the five highlights from the 5.6.3 release. Please try the release and upgrade your sites. And if you have questions or comments on any of the improvements, just comment on the release notes. And you can find those just by Googling Magnolia 5.6.3.